Hey everybody and welcome to my October edition of Board Game Buys. So this is a series where I look at all the games that I've acquired during the months and just, uh, just to give you an idea about what's um, kind of coming into the collection or what's essentially going onto my shelf of shame and um, so you have an idea about what's coming up for review. Um, I've got some old games, I've got some new games, I've got some big games, I've got some small games and I think I've got 19 in total to talk about this month. So first up I've got Archaeology which um, I think this has just been reprinted. Uh, this is an older Phil Walker Harding game, a, a very simple set collection card game but with an element of pushy luck to it where you're trying to collect these different artifacts but being careful at any time there can be a sandstorm uh, meaning that you can potentially wipe out a lot of those cards from your hand um, so you've got to decipher whether you want to bank them uh, now or wait till later until you get more points but of course risk losing them if you do so. A nice little 15 minute game and I should be reviewing this one in the next probably probably the next week. Next up, I have a, a much older game with Robert Knights. So this is actually one of the initial uh, Rudiger Dawn games. So Rudiger Dawn, certainly one of my favorite designers. This one is a tile placement abstract um, game where you're placing up these tiles like this. Some of these um, tiles have different terrains on. So you've got your, like, your, your standard grass, you've got your forest, and you've got your mountains as well. And I suppose this was almost the forefather of that classic Rudiger Dawn um, Istanbul system where you're pl placing these discs and then distributing them out from that stack. And in this one, you're trying to claim these different towns and cities um, in order to score victory points. Um, but you can cover over your opponents and things. So it's quite a clever little abstract game. Um, I like how tight this one is. And again, uh, my review should be out fairly promptly for this one. Um, quite a nice little again, 15 minute, maybe, maybe a bit longer than that, abstract style tile placement game. Next up, I have Capital Lux 2 Generations. So I've heard a lot of good things about this one, particularly from uh, Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game. Um, of course, he's um, my my co-host during the um, Corporate Cardboard uh, podcast show thing we do. Uh, but this one is, I think it has lots of variability. Um, of course, it's a card-driven game, as you can see here. But I've heard really good things. It says it's a time limit of, I think... Um, Let's have a look, what's the time say on here? 15 to 40 minutes. So you can have really snappy games here, um, sometimes a bit more drawn out ones. Um, I've had this one scale as well. So I'm really excited to see what this system has to offer. And I think there's a lot of replayability in here. And so I'm kind of semi going into this one blind, um, purely based on a um, good reputation and good word of mouth is why I've, why I've picked this one up. Uh, staying on to smaller card games, I have Elements. So I picked this one up for relatively cheap. Uh, this one is a micro game, so it only actually has a few cards in there. Um, I think, yeah, just 16 playing cards and some markers. Uh, I love the art direction of this game. It has this kind of tarot style artwork. And this is one of those golf style games where you want to have as few points as possible, a strictly two player game. But I believe there's a third thing kind of in the mix where you've got to kind of tailor the cards you're acquiring quite carefully because um, another an outside factor can, um, can really weigh in on who's going to win this game. So um, I got recommended this one through my Q&A session and it appealed to me. Again, picked it up for relatively cheap. And so again, I'm kind of going into this one a bit blind, but excited to do that. So that is Elements. Next up, I have Streets. So Streets was, um, I suppose this is the sequel, or I suppose the maybe spiritual sequel of Villagers, um, which by the same company, same box shape, um, Sinister Fish, uh, I believe. Uh, this one, though, not rather than being like a little kind of maybe a, a gateway level engine builder, a little tableau builder, this one is more of a tile placement game as you are trying to um, get points by building these these streets of these tiles um, and they all have different kind of scoring criteria on them so some might say you know score x amount of points for each um you know, for each camera you have on that road or something and you're basically placing them out trying to map up these roads building a little map pretty lightweight i have played this one and again thoughts on that one to um to be released soon so that is streets Next up, a bit more of an obscure one, more card-driven games here. This one is Progress uh, Evolution of Technology. So this one is actually by Andrew Novak, who I generally tend to like his games, and from NSKN, which uh, later became Board and Dice. Uh, this one is a civilization-style game, um, card-driven, as I said, and um, where you are trying to, again, go through the ages and get kind of better and better technology. Uh, this one I've heard, again, heard good things about by some pretty... Um, pretty reputable names and some pretty um, you know people I respect or their opinions I respect so quite intrigued by this one 
because I'm still kind of yet to find that Civ game that I really love and that I can get to the table regularly. And I think this one has potential to fit that niche. So um, yes, kind of intrigued to see what this one has to offer. Um, and um, of course, uh, when I get this onto the table, I will share what I think about it. Next up, back to the smaller games with Cabo. Uh, this is the deluxe edition, but don't let that kind of put you off about how deluxe this one is, because it is simply just a bunch of cards. Uh, this one is a, a kind of um, another golf style game where you're trying to score as few points as you can. Um, but actually, I think you're trying to kind of shed your cards as well. So it's kind of a shedding golf style game. Um, it has a, can you shed your cards quicker than your opponents? Uh, I think this one has some element of memory to it as you're peeking at cards and just trying to get rid of the bigger ones. Uh, but I think for a filler game, I think this is kind of got a bit of a cult following and the people who like it really like it so hopefully i'm one of them and um cabo is a decent game so yeah interested to see what that one has to offer next up back to more kickstarter games this one is uh, cartographers the collector's edition so cartographers a roll and write game i really enjoy as you are um have your little map and you're trying to add all the different terrain types on it to score different well, different objectives and score points in different ways. And uh, this one is the has the heroes expansion in it, and it also has some loads of additional content just to add more replayability. Really nice production here. Um, yeah, it is quite a big box for a um, for a roll and write game, but I think cartographers can warrant that. Particularly, if there's so much different things to try here. Uh, different maps. Um, you know, you've got dungeons, you've got different layouts, different objectives. So, uh, yeah, I like the system, and um, you know, more of good games is uh, is always a good thing. Next up, I have the Search for Planet X. So this was really one of the hits of last year. Uh, this is a deduction game. Of course, you can see it's set in space here. I do really enjoy deduction games. Um, I, I'm kind of skeptical about if, um, if some of the deduction games or newer deduction games are going to be as good as some of the ones already out. For example, I love games like um, Cryptid. I love games like Awkward Guests. You know, is this one going to be as good? I've heard that it is. You know, it's got a very high, very highly regarded amongst deduction players. Um, it uses app assistance as well, which I'm not against. Um, so I'm, I'm really open to try this one, and maybe this has potential to replace something like Cryptid. Um, but we shall see. So get always willing to play a deduction game. I think this one plays relatively quickly, gets 60 to 75 minutes, which is quite a nice little sweet spot for me. So yeah, hopefully this one lives up to its reputation. That is the search for Planet X. Something completely different here now. We've got a Game of Thrones, uh, the board game. So this is the uh, the second edition. So um, a Game of Thrones is one of my, um, you know, one, one, one of my favorite fantasy series. I absolutely love it. I know the TV series became massive as well. Uh, this one is, of course, the uh, board game based on the book series. So you've got all the um, artwork and stuff that isn't based on the TV series, which I love. Um, I know this is kind of a, a, basically a war game, which I very rarely play. Uh, this one is supposed to take hours and hours and hours. Um, so I'm very kind of, um, I accept the fact that I might not get this one played anytime soon. Um, maybe even never. But, you know, I'm, I've got it in my collection just to sit, sit on the shelf waiting for that right chance to play this one because I just want to have one big blowout and maybe spend a whole night invested in it um, because that would really make my night. So, excited to try it. Um, again, I love the IP and hopefully um, this game is going to be good. I know it's got a kind of a polarising opinion on it. Some people love it. Some people think it is just too long and a bit too cutthroat for them. But we shall see. Um, I want to try it anyway just to, uh, just to have that experience. Next up, I have Arena Roma 2. So this is actually um, the sequel to one of Stefan Feld's, um, I think it's one of his original games, if not his first game, but this is the second one. Uh, this is more of a confrontational game for what you'd expect from a Stefan Feld. It's a, a card-driven, dice-rolling, dueling game. Again, another, another one for strictly two players. As you're playing cards in front of you, um, all of these spots allocated to a different dice pit value then you're using these cards to do different things obviously to try and win the game you are hurting your opponent's cards you're trying to collect points um, and you're trying to deplete your opponent's points as well i've actually recorded a review of this one already which should be dropping probably in the next couple of days so stay tuned for that one and um, certainly a change of pace for a stefan feld game next up i have Acro Theory. So Acro Theory, I've heard this is supposed to be one of the best pick up and deliver style games. And I know pick up and deliver games are something a lot of people actually shy away from, but it's actually one of my favorite mechanisms. I love the idea of um, pick up and deliver games. I just like that. 
Um, I like building those pathways and thinking optimally on you know my most efficient route. And um, you know I like the uh, the look of this game. I think it's got a nice muted kind of classical vibe to it. Um, so yeah, I want to try it, and um, I have finally got got the chance to pick it up. So hopefully, um, again, this one's going to be something to um, to enjoy. So that is Acro Tiri uh, by Zedman Games. Next up, definitely the lightest game um, out of these. This is Skull. So uh, Skull is actually a game I've never played before. So I know this is a popular bluffing game. It's supposed to be one of the best bluffing games. Um, it's a twist on the Perudo Liars Dice system. But instead of having dice, you've got these coasters instead. I don't know the particulars about how this plays, but I'm sure it's, it's featherweight in terms of its light, in terms of its um its weight. So yeah, very, very light. Almost anybody can play this one. And I'm still looking for a really great bluffing game, at least a really fast one. And Skull, by its reputation, could be that game. Nice production. And I think this one scales pretty well too. So what's the play count on this? Uh, you go three to six players, which is which is right for me. So I never really go beyond that. And hopefully it scales well at all those player counts. So that is Skull. Next up, another bit of a blind buy. This one is Cubards um, by Stefan Alexander. And this one, another card driven game. So I seem to be very um, card orientated on this episode. So this one, you are collecting cards. Um, I think it has more of a spatial puzzle to it as you're trying to surround these cards and get points in different ways. Uh, another recommendation through my Q&A session um, a few days ago. But you know, maybe it's good. It's still very affordable. So I'm, kind of, I'm not too bothered if it's not going to be a big hit. But who knows? Sometimes these little card games that go under the radar are often way better than, they think, than you think they would be. So um, yeah, hopefully Q-Birds is another example of that. So going on to some bigger games now. So... And TK2. So this has really been one of the games I've been after for a long time. So it's been very hard to get hold of um, in, in the UK. So this is uh, by Matt Gertz, who you may recognize as being the designer of uh, Concordia as Navigador. Um, so this one, get like those games, it actually uses the rondelle system. So you've got this rondelle, this action wheel here. And the idea, as you can see on this pretty generic looking map, which I like the look of, uh, you're trying to kind of go on this conquest, you're exploring new regions, you're building up a fleet of ships and um, and obviously army as well. You are trying to build temples and you've got all these different kind of scoring criteria which you can go for. And it's basically a race to get to a certain amount of points and based on that player count. Pretty dry, um, seems pretty deterministic, but I like the idea of mixing that rondelle with a more almost war-based um, theme to it. And, and also I like the victory condition here where you're trying to race for these objectives. So I think this could go um, both ways. I, th I think personally it has all the hallmarks of something I'll enjoy, but hopefully the actual fun from the actual rules comes through as well and pe other people will enjoy it. So that is Antique 2. Next up, I think this might be, other than Kickstarter games, this might be the most recent one, um, most recent release. This is Furnace. So Furnace um, by Hobbyworld, uh, the Russian company. This one is an engine building slash bidding game. Uh, two to four players, 30 to 60 minutes. This has been on the hotness for a long time now. Very good buzz. Um, people have been enjoying this one. So this game, you are acquiring cards um, by using these bidding tokens. I think if you place the big, biggest bidding token, then you get the card itself for its abilities. But everybody else who bids on that and doesn't win, they get the resources. I, I think that's the idea of it, which sounds cool for me. I like, the, I like bidding games that kind of put a twist on the genre and try different things. And that, with a hybrid of engine building as well, Again, ticks all the boxes for me and the, the kind of games that I generally enjoy. Love the art direction here. I, I generally like Hobby World games. So, again, mixed with good word of mouth. Um, being again, very re well received from um, you know, Euro gamers as well as kind of more intro level gamers. So, again, I think this one is a pretty much a banker to be something I enjoy. So, hopefully that is the case again. That is Furnace uh, by Hobby World. And on to the final two games now. So certainly the meatiest game here, A Feast for Odin. So this is, if you're not aware of this game, uh, this is an Uwe Rosenberg design, which is pretty much just one of those kitchen sink style games. You've got a lot going on here as you are trying to acquire all these different uh, resources and build them on your map. 
Uh, in order to cover up all these negative spaces, you're building up ships to go and discover new spaces. Um, you're getting resources, you're turning those resources into other ones, you can go whaling. This is pretty sandboxy from the look of it, a, a worker placement game, but with a plethora of options. And it looks like it's, well to me, uh, Uwe Rosenberg is a bit of a strange designer because I generally like his games, but I've yet to find the one that I truly love. And I think general consensus is that this is most people's favourite Uwe game. Um, and looking at the rule book, I've now started to work my way through it. It is looking promising, so I think I'm going to enjoy it. Um, so yeah, it, I like I, I tend to like these polyomino star games anyway, but one on this scale and this kind of um, yeah this this epicness uh, really sounds appealing to me. So uh, that is a feast road and certainly one of the modern well certainly one of the biggest blockbuster hits in terms of uh, recent Euros. So hopefully again it lives up to that reputation. And I've been after this game for a long, long time because it's been out of print um, for a while in the UK again. So I'm very happy to um, finally get a chance to play this one. But I've got a lot of punching to do because it comes with a lot of punch board. And um, of course, you've got uh, hundreds and hundreds of tokens to, uh, to sort out. And the final game, talking about Grail games, this is one that I've been after for so, so long. This is Wallenstein. So this is uh, the big box version, which has just been fulfilled on Kickstarter and by Queen Games. This, like I say I don't like war games. This has, I suppose, the some DNA of a war game as you're trying to con kind of go on a conquest on this map here. Um, but some of the some of the mechanisms in this game sound right up my alley. I think there's some kind of degree of programming in what you're trying to do, or some simultaneous selections on your on your actions, which you're going to take throughout the round. But the main feature here is a cube tower. So I love cube tower games. Um, you know, Amerigo. One of my favourite games ever uses a cube tower, and I love the way that combat in this game is resolved by a cube tower. So, even if things aren't going your way and you're losing fights by you know by seeing the outcome of these cubes, the, your cubes are going to be staying in the tower, meaning that probably sooner or later things are going to even out, and you're going to kind of reap the rewards of the investment in in that tower. So, yeah, really been looking forward to this one for years and years now. Uh, I wasn't quite sure whether to pick this one up or Shogun, but from the look of the map here, I thought this one looked a bit more interesting because it wasn't so stretched out and there was less potential to kind of turtle in the corners of that board. And maybe that's not going to be the case and maybe the differences are kind of negligible. But nonetheless, this is one of the this is one of the final classic Euro games I've yet to play. So yeah, naturally extremely excited to uh, to get this one to the table and hopefully um, that's gonna happen relatively soon. So that's all the games I've picked up this month. So hopefully next month it will be all the Essen releases. So uh, this is a bit of a mishmash and a bit of a, an eclectic bunch of games. But nonetheless, I love trying old games as much as I like playing newer games. So hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, this episode of Board Game Buys. And um, you know, it just gives you a taste about what's gonna come in the upcoming months. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.